Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another installment of the Vendo podcast. Uh, as everyone knows, my name is Geffen. I'm the head media buyer here at Vendo, and I'm joined by Jason. Hey, guys. Yeah, nice to meet you. Jason is, a, would say at this point, fairly new addition to the team, but seemingly feels like you've been here for a couple of years. Um, <laughs> uh, and today we're going to talk about, you know, I know we talk a lot about strategy and we talk a lot about kind of some very high level things, but over the past couple of months, Amazon has rolled out a lot of features within the advertising platform. Um, those features include uh, budget planning. They include different data points. I know on the last podcast, we covered one of the new reports, but today we're going to take a bit more of a detailed look at what these um, new features look like, what these data points mean, and how we can use them to make actionable changes uh, to our advertising performance. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and we're going to begin. So what I've done here right off the bat is I've gone into, which I'm sure you know by now, if you go into columns and you go to customize columns, you can customize to basically any point that you want. So we can see a lot of different data points. Most of these you've seen before. One new one that we're going to start with is one that was released this past week called Top of Search Impression Share. Now, this is a beta. You might not see it on your, um, on your account. I know that some of the accounts that we manage don't have it yet. But it's been very helpful in giving us some uh, crucial data points. Now, for reference, this, uh, this data point right here can be, um, can be accessed in a little bit better detail in the search term impression share report. Um, but obviously, that requires downloading a report. So here you can see it at a campaign level. And what this tells you is pretty simple. Is what what uh, share of the impressions of the top of search impressions is this campaign receiving for the keywords that it's bidding on? Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters for a few reasons. Number one, on a branded level, we're able to tell uh, how much of our branded uh, branded impression share we're getting. Now, that matters a lot because if we're getting twenty percent, then we know that eighty percent. Or maybe if we have four campaigns at 15%, and we know that 40% of those impressions are going to another brand. Um, so we can say, hey, we need to raise our bids. We're not protecting our brand enough. We know that on an impression level, we're getting beaten out by other brands. Um, Jason, have you seen the same thing? Have you used that on a branded level towards you know, either increasing bids or budgets or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it quickly helps us identify the importance of you know just making sure that we're protecting our brand strongly enough. Um, you know, it's the difference between being either destroyed by our competitors and having them erode our brand over time or really kind of being able to build out that defensive strategy on a more, you know, easy basis. Yeah. So when you're looking at this, this column here on a non-branded level, um, what are some things that you're looking for? I mean, obviously one question is what's a good number, right? Is 10% high? Is 40% high? What should... Or is there a number that the brand should be striving for? Yeah, I mean, from a non-branded side, um, I would say that the, the importance of Amazon ranking obviously comes into play. Um, so I've tried to identify our top performing non-branded campaigns then within each account. Um, and the one that we have either the best return on or a low ACoS on, uh, looking to then improve uh, that top of search impression uh, percentage you know, and just increasing the bids further on those high converting terms that we're showing up more frequently at the top of the page. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, what we always talk about is, you know, you can never take any of these data points in a vacuum. You got to look at them relative to the rest of the campaign, or the rest of the keyword. Um, so as Jason mentioned, if you're seeing a campaign that's performing very well, and you've only got 9% of the top search impression share, double that, triple that, you know, lean into that which is working because it will yield results for you as you, as you improve more. Because as we know, top of search impressions get the best conversions on sponsored products. They just do. People look at the top, it conveys authority. It is a quick impulse click. Um, and it also usually, if you're ranked well in that space, pairs very well with either a sponsored brand headline search ad, a video ad, um, or 
uh, an organic placement on top of page. So this has been uh, a new addition on the column side. Um, now, as we go to the top and, and we'll dive into one or two campaigns in a sec, but now as we go to the top, we've got a couple of things on the top row that are new. If you go to settings, this isn't new, but I think it's important just to cover just so we have, you can set an account level daily budget cap. Um, now what this does is this tells Amazon that on an account level, you can only spend $250 that day. Um, for note, it does only apply to sponsored products. It does not apply to sponsored brands. So let's say you've got $100 in a headline search ad campaign, your daily spend here will most likely be 350. Another caveat is Amazon always reserves the right to go overspend. Um, you know, we very rarely see it, but we do see it. So sometimes if you go on there and your daily spend was 250 and you see 300 or you see 270 or 280, um, Amazon took that liberty and put a little bit more budget behind a campaign that they felt was working. Whether or not it did, it's up for you to decide. And that's where you can adjust campaign level budgets. Say, hey, if you really want to spend 250 a day, maybe drop that down to 230. And then that'll keep that budget at a pretty, pretty hard level. Um, Jason, do you use mostly, do you use daily budget caps or um, campaign level budgets? It depends on the account and how built out it is. Um, I would say, um, depending on how many campaigns they have, I typically actually prefer to use the daily budget cap. Um, and then just distribute the budgets um, kind of at a different ratio basis. Um, but, you know, making sure that once you have a ton of campaigns in there uh, that we're not overspending. So setting a daily budget cap um, and then being able to monitor what the sponsored brand spend is, is kind of my preferred methodology. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, if you go back here, you know, we have $250 in spend uh, daily. As you can see, all of these numbers add up to far more than 250 so if you have a really high traffic campaign, let's say you're going for top of page one and you're going for um, you know, a search term with 400,000 searches. If you put $200 towards that campaign at really high bids, Amazon's gonna spend that $200 quicker than say a slower moving campaign. So what'll happen is your budget will not last as long during the day and it will be lopsided towards that campaign. Now that could be, Part of your strategy. If you have a page one ranking campaign that you want to lean into and you want to spend $200 a day on it, then most likely you'll spend around there. But always be mindful, even if you set uh, account level budgets, just be mindful of your daily budgets here because uh, they can definitely lead to a lopsided um, uh, spend structure. Next, we'll go into targeting. Well, actually, we'll stay on budgets. Makes more sense. So, Amazon has a couple of other interesting budgets, uh, budget features that they've been working on. So we covered the budget report in the last podcast. This looks essentially like a visualization of the budget report. What this tells you is this takes your campaigns and this says, hey, how, for, for what portion of the day are we in budget? So are we running out or not? How many missed impressions do we have? Missed clicks, missed sales, et cetera. Same, same um, approach that the uh, budget report takes, but luckily it's all here. So this is a big change that's very clear that Amazon is moving towards is they're looking to build out their dashboard pretty aggressively. Now, Jason, you work in uh, Google and Facebook a lot. Um, I'm sure we have some ways before we're at those levels, but do you see that direction or at least do you see that direction moving there or do you think Amazon's taken a bit of a different approach. I actually, I kind of think Amazon's taken the lead on them. Um, it's kind of crazy because this only came out, you know, a few weeks ago uh, between the budget rules, views, and report. Um, and it feels like it's been a lifetime already because it really is so helpful. Um, but I think being able to understand, um, you know, the number of missed impressions, uh, you know, sales and clicks that easily, you know, that eas easily where it's digestible, um, you know, in quick reference is something that Amazon's actually kind of taken uh, the front seat in, but it is similar to Google in terms of um, Google has, you know, similar account structures and you're able to kind of see where your, your budget is running out on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, whereas Facebook, um, you know, there's a little bit more you can do to control, um, you know, the pacing and the spend, spend limits with day parting. 
Um, but I've been I've been really happy with the Amazon rollouts, and uh, you know it's it's always nice to have more data to analyze and glean from. And I think they've done a really nice job of making it very uh, presentable, you know, and easy to find. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, these are these are data points that are different from Google and Facebook, and it seems like they're making a point to uh, differentiate there. But as you mentioned, on a functionality basis, on the ability to change and set rules, Amazon has a long way to go. But it's clear that they're getting there. We're all dying and waiting for day party. Uh, that's going to make a huge difference. Until then, um, we got to work with what we have. So this, as I mentioned, this is essentially the budget report. Um, and you know, we'll always recommend to take everything Amazon says with a grain of salt because it is Amazon. So you look here and you say, hey, you know, we have eleven thousand missed impressions, thirty to uh, one hundred and ten dollars in missed sales. Um, it's very possible, but again, you know, we need to look at the profitability and see how much do we need to spend to get that extra thirty or fifty or seventy dollars in sales. Um, but I would recommend to always take a look at this because Amazon doesn't roll features out lightly. So they've, you know, put a mass amount of data into this and, and it definitely has some decent recommendations. Um, but you can see, you know, Amazon saying for an $80 extra a day in spend, we can drive supposedly 170 to 535. So we're going to test that out. And, you know, if we convert well there, we're going to lean in further. If not, we're going to scale back. Um, so that's a good, that's a good budget tool there to assess and analyze. And then you can change your budgets in this tool right here. Now, just to stay on the budgets, if you go back to the campaigns, um, you'll see here that when you click on budgets, you are now able to do what's called add a budget rule. And this is a fun little, little feature that we've been playing around with. But essentially, if you click on add a budget rule, essentially what you're able to do is plan out a budget. So let's say you know um, the brand that you're working with or your brand is doing a big marketing promotion. Or let's say you plan on doing a lightning deal or let's say Black Friday, Cyber Monday is coming up um, and you want to increase the amount of money you're spending, uh, but you don't want to have to go back and change it afterwards. Well, you can actually go in and change that budget um, and tell them, hey, on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, increase budgets by 50%. And what it'll do is it'll literally say, if you've got a hundred dollar budget, it'll put it up to 150 um, for that day or that week or, or, uh, or uh, whatever time period it's at. And then you can, um, you, can, you can not have to worry about scaling that back. Now, the second thing is there's something called performance. Um, Jason, have you worked in performance at all? So, so far we've been uh... You know, definitely just using schedules more because we haven't seen, um, you know, a big, uh, you know, platform wide sale on Amazon yet since this feature has been rolled out. But I think I'm really excited to start testing uh, that if certain criteria are met, that we, you know, will automatically have that rule applied, uh, one being a cost percentage. Um, so definitely looking to explore that further, um, especially to uh, being able to kind of separate and set budget rules based off the conversion rate. Uh, taking advantage of that performance in the campaign and then making sure that you're not self-limiting by having your preset uh, spend and budget rules. Yeah, absolutely. So what this is, is instead of adjusting based on spend, so increases your budget, uh, so this one increases your budget during high traffic times. Here you can actually change metrics. So you can, you can drive Amazon to show your ads and to uh, display your product in certain parts of the platform based on a certain guiding KPI. This reminds me a lot of uh, like Facebook campaign goals when you're setting them up. Are you, are you optimizing for clicks? Are you optimizing for conversions? Are you optimizing for profitability? Um, this seems like Amazon is taking a stab at moving in that direction. And you can say, hey, CVR is conversion rate. So you can say, hey, on August, whatever, uh, 28th, I want Amazon to test out a greater conversion rate than 50%, you know? And hey, if they can do that, that is incredible. But what that tells you is Amazon is looking to optimize there. Now, 
what that means on the ground can mean a lot of things. Is it putting ACOS in the background? If you do ACOS, is it, is it putting um, conversions in the background? There's still a lot of testing to be done here, as Jason mentioned. But overall, this is probably the biggest on the ground feature that Amazon has rolled out recently. And by feature, I literally mean something that can be an action item that you can take that can uh, move the needle in one direction or another, not just give you information and ask you to do the work. Um, so there's gonna be more to come on this. I think that this is the beginning of, of as Jason mentioned, Amazon really leading the way in, in a different form of PPC advertising. Um, and we'll probably have some case studies built out on this eventually as to, hey, is ACOS the best metric to go for page one ranking? Is conversion rate the best metric to do for um, profitability? Um, and so we'll see, we'll see what comes from this. But overall, this budget rule is very crucial. And you can find this budget rule in, on, a, on a campaign level uh, in the campaigns. So if you click on the campaigns and you go in there, so here I'm in this campaign, you'll see if I was in budget, we don't have any set up, but if I was in budget rules on the left, you'll see that budget rule set up and then you can adjust it in there too. Yeah, and the, uh, the only other thing I wanted to add, uh, which is important I think for us to look at uh, is those metrics are calculated using data from the previous seven days for sellers and 14 for vendors. Yeah, that's crucial. Um, yeah. So when you talk about calculated for past seven, so if we're raising a cost by 10%, it's going to take a cost for the last seven days. Yes, exactly. Um, but definitely just, I mean, we wish it was a little bit longer of a look back window. Um, but then in terms of being able to use that to kind of re reduce our manual effort, um, you know, and in time spent adjusting budgets is going to be, you know, crucial, especially, um, you know, around big holidays and special events. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's going to be massive because you'll still have to monitor your budgets on those days. And you'll still have to be looking at them closely, but you'll be rest assured after the day is over. You know, if you have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Monday ends at midnight, you don't have to wake up uh, at, you know, one in the morning and set all those budgets back. It'll just automatically do it and you won't overspend for the beginning of those, um, you know, they're the beginning hours of that day. The downside is, as everyone knows, with major holidays, this doesn't yet apply to cost per click. So when you increase your bids for those holidays, you're still going to have to go in and change the bids. So on a budget level, this stands. On a bid level, I would say there's still more to be desired. And then finally, we've got targeting. So this is a new one as well. Amazon rolled this out within the past couple of weeks. Um, and what we're able to see here is we're able to see essentially what type of targeting we're running um, for you know, various campaigns and various keywords uh, in, in our uh, account. So you'll see here, you've got um, you know, auto campaigns where Amazon is selling, hey, what type of targeting are you doing for close match, for substitutes, for compliments, et cetera? Um, and then you scroll down and it'll actually give you the keywords that you're targeting as well and how they're performing. If, if this looks familiar, there's a reason. It's because it's essentially uh, the keyword report that comes from sponsored products. They've now migrated and visualized that in the dashboard. Um, but Jason, we always talk about customer search term report. So I think the keyword yeah. report is interesting because, um, you know, some of these some of these keywords you'll see here on targeting type are exact or they're broad. So if they're broad, it doesn't provide you with the level of granularity that a customer search term report does. Yeah, no, I think this is this is kind of one of the features that's going to lag behind the more detailed yeah. reports. We, we love the search term report. Um, you know, that's something that we find is from a strategic standpoint, one of the best ways that we can go in and understand what customers are searching for and then how we can structure our campaigns moving forward. Uh, but I do think this is supposed to be kind of similar to the budget rules, just 
something to be able to quickly glance at and easily digest, but not necessarily uh, from a strategic standpoint, necessarily, um, you know, fully replace the search term reports that we, uh, we have access to. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, search term reports are just better, but you'll see a couple of high level things here. As you can see, they're building out some widgets. So top performers based on impressions. Um, and you can click in here and change that out. Bottom performers, what are our worst keywords? based on orders or clicks or whatever. Um, and then you can make some high level optimizations, but Jason's 100% correct. It pays to just you know take the extra minute and download the customer search term report if you're really making some changes there. Because if not, you're not gonna get the granularity that you want. But regardless, this is in there. Um, and this is something that, uh, that you know Amazon is telling us, hey, we're moving in that direction because for any of you that work with, uh, let's say, Google advertising, you know, the level of, of keyword granularity inside the dashboard is still significantly higher. Um, but yeah, that's it pretty much for the, uh, for the dashboard features. So we've got um, top of search impression share, just to recap, we've got top of search impression share, we've got uh, our daily budget account level budget caps. We've got our budget rules. Um, we've got our campaign level budgets and we've also got our targeting. That's all just in the dashboard. I would imagine considering as Jason mentioned that all of these or most of these, a couple of them have been here for uh, longer but all these have been rolled out in the past, what 30 to 45 days. Um, Amazon's internal uh, ad team is, is kind of going into overdrive. So I would expect that within the next 30, 60, 90, we're gonna be seeing a lot of new features. Um, Jason, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Anything that you think should be called out? Uh, the only thing that I wanted to mention regarding targeting um, is I think this is a great beta um, to maximize the attention around a new product launch um, for you know, increasing brand awareness and then also being able to explore kind of how to take advantage of uh, competitors market space. So. Um, I'm excited to, you know, get to use this targeting feature more often, uh, especially around some new product launches, uh, because a lot of the other stuff I think that we touched on is going to make, you know, life easier as an advertiser in terms of scheduling budget rules, especially around holidays. Um, but for, you know, companies launching new products, I think this targeting feature is going to, you know, make even uh, defending the, the market share that much easier and then kind of expanding their presence, um, you know, even, even better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you guys are looking at how you're targeting keywords for new launches, um, this would be a really high level, quick way to see. Same with top of search impression share too. When you know you want to get your eyes in, or your product in front of as many eyes as possible, um, getting that top of search impression share and seeing, hey, we're only getting 10% for this keyword that has 500 searches, we need to be at 80%. So let's push that aggressively. So again, taking these data points and extracting the information you need and then um, converting that into actionable items is really what this is all about. That's the information that Amazon's giving you. The only place they're not is on the, is, is on the budget scheduling side where they're actually asking you to, uh, to not only assess the information, but they're giving you the ability to make that change. Jason, thanks so much for joining. Um, this has been really informative. It's crazy how just you know a couple of features can take up a full podcast episode uh, because there's so much to talk about. So everyone, thank you so much for joining. Obviously, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. My email is geffen at vendocommerce.com, G-E-F-E-N. Jason's is J-A-S-O-N at vendocommerce.com. We're available all day. If you have questions about um, what these features mean, what are some best practices, you know, time and again, we'll do a best practice episode to talk about some of these features. I would imagine Jason will be back on here talking about that budget scheduling. Uh, maybe after holiday uh, mm -hmm. and see where, where we saw some wins. Also by holiday, there might be some more features to talk about as well. Yeah. At this rate, I feel like they're going to keep rolling them out, uh, but it's great because it's made our life, um, you know, easier as an advertiser on Amazon. It's nice to see uh, some of the updated features they're rolling out. Yep. Absolutely. Well, all right. Thanks for joining everyone. <laughs>